Hi everyone, my name is Astrini. In the previous video, I have covered um, problem 2 of tutorial 7 in the class MA3005 Control Theory at the Nyon Technological University. And in this problem, I'm going to cover the last problem, problem 3, which is ex actually not much of a root locus problem, but um, just for um, complete completeness, I'm going to um, explain and um, give a very brief answer on the root locus plot of this problem. So let us start. In this problem we have a block, a system in a block diagram and this block diagram is more complicated than the usual block diagram that you have shown, uh, you have seen in class. We have k over s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2 in a forward loop and then we have a feedback for this block or this system and then the feedback has a gain of 0 0.2 and of course this is a negative feedback and then on top of this whole block we have an integrator that is nested outside and in additional for the whole thing we also have another unity negative feedback so this is like a um, nested loop kind of problem and for the first part we have to show that this block diagram is actually equivalent to another block diagram given in the question, which is k over s multiplied by s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2. And there is a feedback loop, which basically has a gain of 1 plus 0.2 s. And this is given as a negative feedback into our system in the forward loop. So we have to show that these block diagram and this block diagram are actually equivalent to each other. So let us start. It is actually not a very complicated problem. First of all, we have to identify that um, there is only one component in the forward loop and one component in the feedback loop. So what we can do is to bring this line outside of the integrated 1 over s so we can simplify the forward loop into just a single component and we have to see that if we bring this line outside of the integrator we have to add some term at the feedback loop so that once we multiply the integrator with the feedback loop the effect the effect will cancel out so um, in general i will think of it as if i bring this line outside and I have to multiply 0.2 with 1 over whatever is in the block. So um, let's see. We will have k over s plus 1 over s plus 2. And 1 over s. So here, I will bring the feedback outside. And then there's also another feedback, unity feedback, on top of each other, on top of everything. So here, I have to actually multiply 0 0.2 with 1 over 1 over s. So it's actually 2. And to double check if we're actually doing the right thing, we can observe the forward Loop com the forward component and the feedback component. In the forward component, in the original block diagram, we have k over s plus 1 over s plus 2 multiplied by 1 over s. And in the new simplified block diagram, we actually have the same thing. So in this direction, we're actually getting the correct thing. And how about the feedback? So let's see the result of the equation in this point where I note star. So if I start from this point and I go through this loop one round 
and I come back here, what I will get is k over s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2 multiplied, everything is multiplied by 0 0.2. And here, what I will get is k over s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2, and this term is multiplied by 1 over s, and everything is multiplied by 0 0.2 s. So actually, this s and that s will cancel out with each other, and at this point, this two block diagram will give equivalent values. So that is the first step. And the second step is pretty straightforward. We have two parallel loop, uh, two or two parallel feedback. And we can actually add the parallel feedback together. Um, so we can just like have a single feedback line instead of two. And we have the same forward loop component And in the feedback, we just add 0.2s and the unity feedback together. So we have 1 plus 0.2s. And this is given as a negative feedback into our system over here. So now we have shown that this block diagram is actually equivalent to this block diagram over here. So that's the first part of um, problem 3. And for the second part of the problem 3, let's start with another piece of paper. We are asked to find the effect of increasing k on the system time response using root locus. So what does it mean by explain increasing k using root locus? Um, remember that on the earlier section of this class, we actually learned that if we plot um, the pole of a system or a pole in a root locus, which consists of the real and imaginary axis, and we have the pool, we can actually write the pool as minus sigma plus j omega d. So the x component is minus sigma, and the y component is omega d. So this is our s or the root. And sigma is equals to zeta omega n, and omega d is equals to omega n, square root of 1 minus zeta squared. And we know that um, the time response of the system can be characterized from the damping ratio, which determines the um, oscillation and time, time and the response time. So we can find the roots of the system at different values of k and then deduce um, the time response based on the resulting zeta. So first of all, um, to find the values of s or the roots of the system or, or the poles of the system, we have to first find the characteristic equation, which is found from the denominator of the closed loop transfer function. So the closed loop transfer function is given by k over s multiplied by s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2 plus k multiplied by 1 plus 0.2s. So the characteristic equation is this term, the denominator, and then it's equal to s to the power of 3 plus 3s squared plus 2 plus 0.2ks plus k. And this is equal to 0. Set that to 0. And by random, I will just pick two values of k randomly. I pick k equals to 1.3, and this will give me, um, so I sub in 1.3 into this characteristic equation, and then solve for the s, and I will get s equals to minus 2.253, and s equals to minus 
0.3735 plus minus j multiplied by 0 0.6614. So using these two terms, I can equate them with zeta omega n and omega n square root of 1 minus zeta squared and solve for zeta and the zeta that I get is 0 0.49. Next, I will pick randomly again k equals to 5 sub into the characters equation solve for s and what I will get is s equals to minus 2.5874 and s equals to minus 0 0.2063 plus minus j multiplied by 1.3747 so again use these two values equate it with these two um, variables zeta omega n and omega n squared of 1 minus zeta squared so for the two simultaneous equation and we get zeta equals to 0 0.15 so we can actually see that as k increases from, from 1.3 to 5 zeta decreases from 0 0.49 to 0 0.15 so increasing k will decrease, I'm sorry, increasing k will decrease the damping ratio zeta and if damping ratios decrease the system will have more oscillation And also, the associated response time, or um, TR, rise time, will be faster. So that is basically the effect of increasing K into the system time response. And um, that's basically for all for problem three. And um, it's not actually asking us to plot the root locus, but you can always plot it um, if you want. Um, so I'm not going to explain into detail the step by step on how to plot and get the root locus, but I'm just going to get give um, a very brief and uh, simple summary on the root locus for problem three. So if we have to plot the root locus for problem 3, just follow the step one by one. First of all, we have to determine the starting points and the ending points. And the starting points will be at s equals to 0, s equals to minus 1, and s equals to minus 2. And then the ending points, we have one open loop zero, which is at s equals to minus five. And then that means we need two more ending points and they will be located at infinity. Next, we find the breakout points or the break-in points for the root locus. And this is given by dk over ds equals to zero and k is obtained from the characteristic equation and solving that we will have s equals to minus 6.934 s equals to minus 1.6091 and s equals to minus 0.4475 so always we have to check the validity of the breakout points if they actually um, lies on the root locus or not. So we just plug in the resulting value of s into the characters equation um, and look at the values of resulting k if that makes sense or not. And after doing the validity, validity test, we actually find out that only s equals to minus 0 0.4475 is the valid breakout points and the other two breakout points are 
the invalid ones. So next we can find the asymptotes and the number of asymptotes is given by the number of open loop poles minus the number of open loop zeros so we have 3 minus 2, uh, 3 minus 1 and that is equals to 2 asymptotes. So we can find the angle of asymptotes which is equals to plus minus 180 degree multiplied by 2q plus 1 divided by n minus m and this gives us plus minus 90 degree. And also the point of intersection of the asymptotes which is equals to sigma a and this is equals to 1. So we know that the two asymptotes will intersect each other at the real axis value of 1. And lastly, we can find the intersection of the root locus with the imaginary axis. And we have the intersection point equals to S equals to plus minus J square root of 5 and the associated K value is equal to 15. So with this information we can plot the root locus and what it will look like is something like this. So we start off at 0, minus 1, and minus 2 and then there's an open loop pulse at minus 5. And then the breakout point is at minus 0 0.4475, which is somewhere here. So we know that it must be this loop, um, this pole, and that pole go into the breakout point and break out here. And then the asymptote is at plus minus 90 degrees. So basically the asymptote is this line. Um, I'm sorry, at 1. So here is the asymptote. So it's plus minus 90 degree and it intersects at 1. And then the intersection with the j omega axis is at square root 5, which is somewhere here. So we know that this pole will end at this zero directly. And then for the case of the other two poles, it will go into the breakout point, and then one will go up, crosses over to the major axis, and follow the asymptote. And the second one will be just the mirror image from the real axis. So this is basically how the root locus for problem 3 looks like. And that's all for problem 3 of tutorial 7, and thanks for watching!